Hello again, everybody. Our very special guest today in the Nike hot seat is the brand new head coach of Davidson. He is Andy Lozier. A Andy, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Congratulations. It was the Davidson College Director of Athletics, Jim Murphy. Uh, he announced your hire on Thursday, April 21st, and a pretty special day for Davidson. Uh, congratulations to you in that. How did the How did the whole hire come about? Well, it's a little bit of an interesting story. Um, I first went to Davidson College in 2014 to wrestle against them. And uh, we had an early afternoon duel on a Saturday. And so I had gotten my team ready. Um, everyone was on weight. And as is in wrestling, we had a lot of time to kill. So I threw on a pair of running shoes and, and went for a, a run around campus. And it was February and almost 70 degrees. Um, and so I decided to break off campus and head into town. And I was just totally um, blown away by uh, the feel of the community. And so uh, after that time, I kind of always had my eye on Davidson. Um, and then we were actually back down there this year for a dual meet in December. And that only reaffirmed my initial belief. Um, and then it was like a week later that I heard um, that Bob would not be returning at the end of the season. Andy, I'm going to ask that you sit a little closer to the camera, sure. if you would. Fill up yeah. that screen. People want to see your smiling face. Mm -hmm. And smiling because you have a new job. Let's talk about your time. And it was four years at Sacred Heart University rebuilding that program. It seems that everywhere you've gone, you've either built the program from scratch or you took a four-year learning uh, ex expedition at Princeton, where I think you, you gained so much. But Sacred Heart provided its own special types of challenges. Can you talk about the challenges you face while at SHU? Absolutely. And I, I'm proud to talk about it. I'm so grateful for my time here. I, I had five full seasons at Sacred Heart, um, just coming to the close of um, what, what would have been my fifth year. Uh, I'm so happy about the work that was done here. We definitely saved this program. It was a program that needed to be saved. Um, and after we saved it, we began the process of rebuilding it. And I, I use that phrase we, because it is really a testament to the great people that kind of jumped on board with me. We had a great kind of corporate advisory board that we installed here. Uh, so guys like Carter Mario, Ted Young, Steve Fye, uh, were some gentlemen in the Connecticut area um, not far from our campus that had a strong affinity to wrestling and they really helped um, in, in, in every stage of the, the process of saving and rebuilding Sacred Heart Wrestling. So when I look back to, to 2012 when I was hired and there was um, there were five wrestlers on the roster, five returning wrestlers, uh, there was not one single dollar in our fundraising account, not one penny. And we did not have a uh, assistant coaching position, a full-time assistant coaching position built out. Um, now, when I see all those things have been have been tied up and uh, and and built out, you know, it makes me really, really proud. And then to see the competitive gains that we made. I mean, when I when I got here, the team hadn't won a, a Division One dual meet, and I think around three years or so, uh, maybe two and a half years. Um, so the fact that you know, kind of each year we were slowly starting to rise and bubble. Um, yeah, I look back with a, with a great deal of pride. You also were able to guide a, uh, the second ever pioneer grappler in program history to the EIWA championships. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it was, a, it was a rough start. Uh, my first two years, um, coaching here, when we went to the EIWAs, we didn't win a single individual match. Um, that's a pretty depressing experience <laughs> when you're, when you're a competitive guy. Uh, but then that following year we broke through, um, when Conn and Schuster, uh, upset the returning finalists first round and, and ended up going on to take sixth place. Um, and then the year after that, we actually had three guys place at the EIWA championships. Um, so, uh, that was a definite milestone moment for the, the program, um, you know, it's an incredibly tough conference, and, and when you're Sacred Heart and you fight um, some of the resource battles that we do, it can be pretty hard um, to, to compete with some of the top-tier programs. But um, what those individuals did was really kind of lay down the foundation to, to the other teammates that, hey, you know, you guys can do this here at Sacred Heart. 
You um, can do it. But, well, it takes great leadership, and obviously you provided that. The athletic department bought into your vision, and you bought into theirs. You did the same at Princeton University for four seasons. I've been to Princeton. I'll be going back to Princeton for the All-Star Classic this coming uh, fall. But Princeton University was a, a, a valuable uh, time uh, well spent for learning your craft. Being a coach is not easy. Yeah, the, that that four years, it's, it's hard to describe how much that meant to me and how much uh, my relationship with, with Chris Ayers kind of really formed uh, the future for, for my career in coaching. Uh, he took a little bit of a chance and a leap of faith on me. Um, and and I, I think that hopefully I delivered for him. Uh, we've remained so close ever since. And I, I still have so much passion and pride for Prince and wrestling because, again, we kind of went through that same type of evolution where exactly. – when I started there, it was the worst program in the country. And then now where I see it today, uh, you know, it, it just really kind of makes me smile. Well, it should. Princeton University has had some incredible success, but it's been a building process, much like the building process uh, you experienced at Stevens Technical Institute. You saw immediate results as the Ducks competed in three consecutive NCAA tournaments in your first three campaigns. Uh, so congrats there. The Ducks obviously still continuing on, but we now turn our attention to the the conference, the SOCON. And uh, this is a conference that's continuing to grow, wrestling within the conference, continuing to get better. What are your plans for Davidson? Yeah, we're going to take a lot of what we've done here. And each time I go through a, kind of this rebuilding process, I, I learn so much. So I think I get better and better at it each time. Um, the great thing about Davidson right now is that it, it needs some attention to get back on track, but the program isn't broken like Sacred Heart was back in 2012. So it's got a good, strong roster of guys in place. It has a small recruiting class coming in. It has a it has a great group of alumni. A lot of people don't know that it's a it's a it's a very old program. It's coming in on its uh, 100th year celebration pretty soon. So it has a really deep pool of alumni to to network with. Um, so with that being said, you kind of tie all those components together and there are a lot of excellent opportunities to quickly reshape the culture down there and, um, and get back into a competitive level with the other teams within the conference. We're talking with Andy Lozier and you might have heard in the background uh, people are literally banging down his door to get in to see him. But uh, he's our guest today in the Nike hot seat. Uh, when you think of athletes, what do you know of the athletes at Davidson and um, and who are some of the guys you're going to be counting on? Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I know the team well. Again, we've, we've competed against them head to head in dual meets for the past five years. So I'm not a stranger to, to their roster. Um, and, uh, yeah, they, they have, they have a good foundation in there. And I was able to sit down and meet with, with three of the wrestlers when I actually interviewed. Um, and it was, it was a valuable experience because I was able to gauge their excitement level and they are really, really excited. And I think that's the most important thing. You know, we have a lot in common. Uh, first of all, we're wrestlers. So that, that bond is incredibly strong. And then secondly, whether it's myself or the student athletes, we all really, really want to be at Davidson College. It's an incredibly special place. So I think these common threads are going to allow us to really get to work quickly um, and make incredible improvements in a short amount of time. There wasn't that many seniors, Coach, so you're, you're, you're gaining a roster full of uh, guys that were juniors last year. And now, of course, uh, we're seeing them become uh, seniors this year. At the right time, you're going to come in and, and have some guys that are ready to prove themselves out for you. That's correct. That's correct. That's yeah, exciting. It's, it, absolutely, without question. What are your plans as far as assistant coaches? Uh, that's to be determined. Um, currently, the assistant wrestling coach down there is Colin Johnston, um, and, and he's done a great job in this transition. He's been very, very loyal. I could tell that when I met with the student athletes, they really liked him a lot. Um, Colin and I don't know each other very well. We've been um, communicating a lot over the course of the past week, obviously. I'm going to be down at Davidson uh, again this weekend, and uh, we're going to carve out some time to spend together. So after we talk for a while and get to know each other and I learn a little bit more about him, 
that's going to help determine uh, the direction which we decide to go in with our assistant wrestling coach. I know one of your hallmarks, one of the things that uh, you insist on for success of your athletes is strength and conditioning. And they've got a good one down there, assistant strength and conditioning coach Zach Rawl. What can you tell us about uh, uh, your plans for strength and conditioning and, and uh, uh, continuing to build this program? Oh, man, he's awesome. During my interview, when I got to sit down with the strength and conditioning staff, uh, <laughs> we were getting all excited. I was ready to tear off my suit and put on some workout <laughs> clothes. Um, they've got a great strength and conditioning facility. It's really cool. It's underneath their football stadium. Um, and then to complement that, these guys have an awesome attitude. Um, they're full of energy. Uh, they spoke very highly of the wrestlers and their work ethics. And then our philosophies were very, very compatible. So um, you know, we've already been going back and forth via email, shooting ideas off of each other, and I can't wait to get to work with those guys in Zach's. He, he originally spent time at Virginia Tech. I remember him there uh, assisting the football strength and conditioning staff. Um, and one of the things he does well is program implementation. In other words, working with each individual athlete, trying to figure out what's going to be best uh, based on goals. And, and uh, uh, I think that's integral. And i got to believe uh, he'll be able to help you and continue to help the wrestling program as it continues to mature. So uh, he's, he's got a lot on his plate, but I know you're going to be relying on him quite a bit. No doubt. 100%. I think I first met him, if I recall, at UNC Pembroke. So that goes back a long way. I'm trying to remember the wrestling coach's name, but his office uh, was right off the pool. So it was always very humid in his office. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, talk to us about family. What, what, uh, how did you share this with your family? Um, you know, I have, I have two young children. Um, I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old. So the three-year-old, my little guy, he... You know, he's, he's too young to understand. Uh, my six year old is is, you know, this delightful little girl um, with the, with just the most uh, beautiful personality. And I was I was concerned. You know, we haven't moved before as a family um, at, at, a, at an age where it would impact her. But she kind of has some roots in school with her friends and things like that. And I remember we were sitting on the back porch and my wife and I were talking and we didn't really think she'd be able to even pick up on it. And she kind of interrupted us. She goes, are we moving? <laughs> and, uh, I said, well, yeah, I, yeah, we're, we're probably going to move. And if we do, we're going to be moving to a really beautiful place that's really warm all year round. And um, we're going to be going to a beautiful college with a wonderful athletic program. And you're going to meet a lot of great new friends. And so she was really excited right away. She's such a sweetheart. And then my wife, I mean, incredible. You know, Lauren has not been to Davidson. She's going to be down there. Uh, like I said, we're going down there this weekend. So, you know, we're, we're about to celebrate our 11th wedding anniversary. And I said, hey, listen, Lauren, like if, if you after 11 years, you have any faith in me or any trust, <laughs> trust me in this one that you're going to love this move. But the, the location is huge for us, Scott. We've always had kind of this. I guess a little bit of a dream or a vision of getting to a place like North Carolina. It's just a really special place. Well, the Davidson staff is going to be there to welcome you with uh, open arms as you become the 12th head coach of wrestling uh, a little later on this month. We appreciate you taking the time, Andy. Congratulations again. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon about uh, the team that uh, you'll be putting together and the efforts toward championships and titles and success in the classroom and on the mat. Thanks, Scott. It's always a pleasure. Much appreciated. Andy Lauser, our guest in the Nike hot seat today. He is the new head coach at Davidson. I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching this very special one-on-one. -on -one.